So I'm into music. Music is a passion of mine. I can't remember ever not being into music. In fact, this room, this tiny little room, is what's going to be my new studio, because I've just moved house. It's not acoustically treated yet at all, just bare walls, boxes all over the place. Uh, so I'm really sorry if it sounds terrible in here. So just like everyone else my age who was into music growing up, alongside music there was also skateboarding. And I think that quite literally every single one of my male friends growing up, especially in middle school, could play guitar and skate. It was rare to find a female skater, but they were still at the skate park, they'd just hang around practicing their f***ing fry screams. Oh, take me back. But there was a point as a teenager where I drifted away from skating and got more into music, and then I went to uni. And when I moved to uni, I didn't bring a skateboard, because I was like, I'm not going to use it, I'm going to be way too busy. But then when I got to university, I couldn't drive, uh, I didn't have a bike, I didn't have anywhere to put a bike, because I lived in, like, student accommodation. So I went out and I bought a penny board. And because all I had was a penny board, I just didn't, I kind of didn't really care that much about skating, I was kind of in and out of paying attention to it. But then last year, my love for skating kind of rekindled, and I bought this, which is Land Yacht's Battle Axe, which is pretty scraped up now, but it was beautiful before, and I've really, really enjoyed skating this. It's been great. It's been scary at times. Uh, we've laughed, we've cried. But I thought it was time to get something a little bit more practical, because it's kind of huge. It's like a very long plank of wood, so it's kind of hard to handle, hard to carry around. So I was looking for something more practical, uh, and I'm a big fan of Land Yachts. Not just their boards, obviously, but their content as well that they put out. I like their team, I like their YouTube content. They probably have like some of the best skateboarding social media out there. So I thought I would buy a Land Yachts dinghy, because it's convenient. So here it is. When I ordered it, it said it would take 7 to 14 days to arrive, and then it's been like three days. <laughs> and I've been tracking my order, and it was supposed to arrive tomorrow, and I was like, how is that possible? It's in Indianapolis. And then I got a knock on the door this morning, and I was like, oh, cool. So we're gonna open it. Are you allowed to have a, a kitchen knife on YouTube? I feel like it would just immediately get you in trouble. What does this say? Oh, it's a box certificate. <laughs> Shout out to Premier Packaging Industries. Ah, oh, nice, we got a couple of cute little stickers. They're actually quite pretty. We got two of them, which is nice. So this is the dinghy summit. Oh my word. Oh. Is this ASMR worthy? Not really. Yeah. Using the back end of the knife, like a moron. Whoa. Beautiful! Hmm, it feels very thin, but strong. Ah, that new wheel smell. So I believe this is 28 and a half inches long. Uh, I'm not sure how wide it is, I think... I think it's 8 inches, I probably should have looked that up. So on the wheels, we had a little Land Yachts One Board, One Tree uh, little label thing. To give back to the environment, we have decided that for every skateboard we sell, we will plant a tree. One Tree produces at least 60 boards, so with our program, one tree used will lead to at least 60 new trees planted. We are excited about what we can accomplish together. When you buy one of our boards, you know that you are making a difference and improving the environment for future generations to enjoy. Landjots.com. Lovely. So this has a wood finish on top with spray-on grip, and it's actually, I actually feel surprisingly grippy. It's very, it's quite coarse. The spray-on grip was something I was a little bit worried about because I've never actually skated anything with spray-on grip before. It seems a bit odd to me, but this feels all right. I can't scratch any bits off or anything with my fingers, so that's a good sign. It doesn't feel like regular grip tape. It feels like there's less sand, but it is quite coarse and quite grippy, so I don't know if you'll feel- I don't know if you'd actually feel a difference under your feet. Yeah, it feels fine to me. And if it isn't, I guess maybe you can just sand it down and put your own grip tape on. 
Uh, if it wears down, I guess I'll just do that eventually. So it's got these little sanded out wheel wells, which is nice. So it's got 63 millimeter wheels, uh, hogs wheels, uh, 78A durometer. That's actually not so bad straight out of the box. <laughs> That's actually kind of surprising. So the bearings are ABEX 7 bare space balls, uh, which I, I believe have built-in spaces. I don't know why. Apparently, um, apparently it makes the ride more silent. Uh, that's what they say anyway. Comes with riser pads already in there. One thing that I have noticed is that on the website it said because of COVID, their supply lines, I guess, are kind of messed up. So they have some shortages, some shortages. And it said that the wheels might be a different color to what you see in the pictures online. Uh, and they're not, they're actually the same color. However, the bushings in the trucks are a different color. In the pictures online, they're like a bright sort of neon green. And here they're kind of like a gray color, which doesn't bother me at all. I don't really care. I do really like the graphic on the bottom. Land yachts have good graphics, I like them. It's very shiny as well. So over the next couple of days, what I'll do as I'll go take this out for a skate. I am a little bit sore at the moment because a few days ago I did go absolutely flying off the front of a f***ing one wheel. So one side of my body is really pretty badly bruised up. But I'll take this out for a skate, um, try and get some footage, and report back to you on my findings. So I've had the Land Yachts dinghy now for eight days, and in those eight days I've ridden it almost every single day, uh, but I've managed to get f like four really good long rides out of it. And I feel like I understand the board, what it's going for, what it wants to do, what it doesn't want to do. I feel like, I feel like I've got, I feel, I feel like I've got a good handle on the board. I haven't been able to ride it for like the past two days because the weather has just been Awful. It's currently, as we speak, absolutely hammering it down outside. It is as if the gods themselves are furious at my having ordered a takeaway two nights in a row and having had the leftovers for breakfast both days because I am human filth. So I've become pretty well acquainted with the little dinghy here. So welcome to the review section of the video. This isn't going to be in any sort of like pros and cons list or anything like that because I'm just way too unorganized. Instead it's just going to be like a bit of a long ramble about my thoughts on it. <laughs> the first thing that jumps out about the board when you're riding it is that it is so carvy. It is insanely carvy. And it definitely seems like carviness is exactly what they're going for because the deck is definitely not thin, it's quite a sort of 
a nice wide deck for your feet. It comes with the riser pads already installed, so you're a little bit higher off the ground as well. And right out of the box, the trucks, are they, they feel pretty loose. Like they're, they're very turny trucks. The big chunky wheels as well with the wheel wells and the pretty small wheel base. Like the, the whole board is set up to make you not go in a straight line. When I say it like that, it makes it sound like a bad thing, but it's definitely not a bad thing. This board is so fun to ride. It's insanely fun. Another thing that's really cool is the kicktail because as I said before, I've been really, I've, I've grown accustomed to riding this Land Yacht's Battle Axe. So having a functional kicktail is kind of hard to get used to. The Battle Axe has this like kind of little mini tail thing that um, you, you can, you can tic-tac a little bit with it, but it's like, it's really quite heavy, obviously. And it's not raised either, so when you're riding, you kind of have to feel where the trucks are with your feet and kind of just step over it slightly without slipping off the back. So you kind of just learn to get used to your feet being in the middle of a board. But with this, with a little kicktail, I'd completely forgotten what it was like to be able to tic-tac. <laughs> there were even a couple times when I got on it where I was accidentally lifting the front up because I had just forgotten. Forgotten what this is like. It's really functional as well, and the nose has a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a dip there. So you, it's very oliable. It's very, very oliable. If you're someone who's pretty skillful at doing tricks on a board, uh, you will definitely be able to do tricks on this. Even my fat, rusty self managed to do a couple pup shovets, managed to ollie it, came close to a couple kick flips, but I haven't done them for a long time. But if if you can do kick flips, then you you should be fine on this. Because as I said, it has this little this little nose there. Uh, to hook your foot on, um, and it actually it actually works all right. If you've got your ollies down on a skateboard, then you'll be able to ollie this just no problem at all. I'm really rusty, and I spent the past few years on a penny board and then long boards, so if I can ollie it, you can ollie it. It might look a little bit more labor intensive when I do it, but you'll be absolutely fine. However, if you are a beginner and you cannot ollie. Get a normal skateboard first and learn to ollie on that properly and then try on this. Because if you haven't got the tricks down that you're trying, you can really hurt yourself on a cruiser board. The thing we're doing tricks on a cruiser board is they are smaller, uh, they are harder to land on and when you do land on them, you need to, your balance needs to be perfect. Because otherwise, for starters these wheels are heavier to try and lift off the ground, but they will slip out from underneath you because they are bigger and they are faster, they accelerate quicker. So if you try and do tricks on concrete and you aren't good at them and you land a little bit off balance, it will slip out from underneath you pretty easily. Hence why in the videos I was on grass and I still hurt myself. <laughs> Which is another thing I like to get to actually. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know whether it's because the wheels are heavy or whatever, it loves to land primo. It just loves it. It loves it, loves it, loves it. And I really don't think that's just me because I've never had a problem with that on a skateboard at all. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the heavier trucks, the bigger wheels, I'm not sure, but it, it likes to land primo, so be careful. The thing I was worried about the most was the spray on grip tape. Um, and meh, it's all right. I had hypothesized that there wouldn't be much of a difference, but I think there kind of is. The spray on grip is quite coarse but it is really not as grippy as like if you're gonna put actual grip tape on it. Not that you really need it to be grippy because if you, you aren't gonna be doing things that you usually do on a skateboard on this anyway. The, the, there's more than enough grip to cruise around corners, take t tight turns and all that. However, if you are like a crazy person and you are planning on getting this to do tricks on, then you might want to go for a different dinghy that doesn't have the spray on grip because uh, I think this is the only model that actually does. Or if you really like the graphic on this one, you could get this one and just try and sand this off. I'm sure that would work. For my purposes though, this is more than enough grip. It's fine. What else can I say? Um, the trucks have started to sort of creak a little bit, squeak a little bit after a couple, after a couple like long uses, which I was kind of expecting because the same thing happened with the um, the battle axe. You might be able to hear it. It's not really that big of a deal though. I've heard people say you can take the trucks apart and put a little bit of soap uh, inside this little front part here or like some oil or I saw someone say pencil shavings as well. It's whatever though. It's Trucks are gonna make noises and do all sorts of crazy things as you're breaking them in so it's not really that, that big of a deal. Uh, the space ball bearings are pretty good. 
they still spin. They're, they're fine. And one thing that really impressed me actually is the wheels. These wheels are great. The, these wheels, they just plow over anything. I don't even understand how or why they just do. There's this like long winding road kind of near where I live, uh, where I filmed those clips for this. And there's one section of it as you're going through it that's like kind of under trees. Uh, and there's loads of like, I don't know, like acorns or whatever, and like sticks and twigs and like mucky stuff on the ground. And this just, uh, just goes over them as if they aren't even there. Going over like rocks and speed bumps and stuff like that, it just handles it without any problem at all. And the reason I'm so surprised is because it actually does a better job than these wheels on the Battle Axe. And the wheels on the dinghy are 63 millimeter, and these ones are 70. So these are actually the bigger wheels. I think they're a bit harder, but the dinghy somehow actually gets over things better than this does. And I can't figure out why. It's just, they just seem to go over everything. Like it's not even there. This is also a much more sort of flexible board as well. But with the dinghy, I get like hardly any vibration skating. One of the biggest positives is just the wheels are so good. I don't really know how much more I have to say. Um, it's just a really fun little board. It's just really fun to cruise around on. It's so carvy. It's stupidly carvy. It wants to carve. It, it, it can't... As you're riding it, you can feel it like whispering to you. And it's like... Can you feel it? Can you feel my squishy wheels on the ground? You know what I want to do, baby. You know what I want to do. You want to see how tight I can turn? You want to see the tightness of my turns? Well, do it to me. Do it to me. Push me to my limits. Push me to my f***ing limits, daddy. And that's just something that I can't resist. So yeah, all in all, I'm just, I'm so pleased with it. It's um, such a really nice board to ride. I've taken it down the beach. I've taken it down like my local area. Um, just really, really great to ride on. And fun, it's just so much fun. The board wants to give you a good time. It is telling you, I want to give you a good time. I don't want to get you from A to B in just a straight line. I want you to have a good time doing it. And it really does feel like the board is telling you that as you ride it. It doesn't want to go in a straight line. It wants you to mess around. So thank you very, very, very much for watching. I don't usually do this kind of content, but um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of easy. But let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you have a dinghy and what you think of it. Let me know if you're thinking of buying one and want any advice. Subscribe for more content, uh, leave me a like if you want, and I'll see you in the next video. I heard myself a landed primo I hit the back of my knee On the board and I said